My name is Callum Campbell. I'm the CEO of Limworks. We're a commerce automation platform. So we help brands and retailers automate the operations linked to selling their products all across the internet and managing the back-end process, re processes related to, to selling products online. Uh, and we have teams across Europe and North America. I actually joined the business in 2017 and it's been an amazing journey uh, of growth for us since 2017. Uh, so really, I guess the, the focus areas for us over the past four years or so have firstly been around building a high quality management team. Like I realized on this journey that the importance of having brilliant people around you and that, you know, no one individual can do everything and the quality of the team really is going to determine the quality and the success of the business. So step one for us was all around building a really high quality management team that can help us um, form a really strong and holistic strategy across the entire organization. Uh, and then from there, it's been around, you know, refining and developing our product strategy. Do we really understand our customers? Are we building a product that, that creates real value for them that they actually want to buy? And it's going to be a key part of the technology stack. Uh, and then thirdly, you know, big part of the focus has been around accelerating our go to market. How do we win domestically, but also how do we understand markets internationally and where we should be placing our bets, investing our resources to serve customers and businesses all across the world? It's been an exciting journey and then really felt natural that kind of coming into this past year, so into 2021, it was time for us to move to the next level as an organization uh, and to partner up with an institutional investor to accelerate our growth uh, and to go after a bigger vision. We'd been in a fortunate position where there'd been uh, lots of kind of inbound interest from across the market uh, in working with Limworks from sort of venture capital investors, private equity, sort of strategic trade investors as well. So there was a lot of different interests and we recognized that we were in a good space and it would make a lot of sense for us to partner up. But of course, we didn't just want to kind of have a knee jerk reaction and partner up with whoever was kind of approaching us. We wanted to run a, a clear process to ensure that we understood the market well, the finance, you know, the financing market and the, and the investment market. We understood it well, we understood what we're getting into so that we could basically get the best outcome for our business, not just financially, but in ensuring that we're partnering up with the right organization to help us be successful, both in that moment, but into the future. And so, you know, there's a different, you know, different types of prep that we did. Um, and, uh, but, you know, firstly, I'd say we needed to make sure that the house was all in order in terms of the data that we had inside the business. If we wanted to tell our story well and, and get investors excited about our vision, it started with making sure our data was clean, it was clear and it was coherent. And so, you know, data allows us to tell the story and the right story is going to get investors excited about the vision. So that was, you know, kind of part one for us. Um, and, and then secondly, you know, moving on from that, making sure that just we were well prepared full stop in terms of actually running a process that we weren't doing it kind of sporadically and in bits. We had the data, we had the story there to tell. But then we ran a well-structured process and by doing that by being well prepared in terms of how we ran the process actually meant that we i think saved more time we could go faster rather than lots of back and forth it was like this is us this is who we are this is the process and we were ready to move quickly with the parties that wanted to engage with us um it also meant that by being well prepared we we ultimately were in more control you know we weren't having to kind of be pushed onto the back foot and and kind of uh, thrown aside by different types of questions, but we were in control. We we kind of could be on the front foot in the conversations that we're going going into um, and be able to anticipate the types of questions uh, and dialogue we might have. Uh, and then ultimately, you know, if you're well prepared, you got that data, you got the story, you, you got control, you've got more options. You're speaking to different types of investors uh, and it allowed us really to size up, okay, who do we want to work with? Who's going to make most sense for this business and for our customers? We definitely made a real effort to ensure the house was in order when it came to our data and just giving real granularity um, to those investors that we were speaking to. So really what it was about was um, taking every element of the business uh, and making sure that we had a clear view of what are the headline KPIs for the different elements of the business and do we understand them across different dimensions. So let me, I'll, I'll explain that a bit further. So for us, you know, the, the headline elements was our go-to-market functions, so our sales and marketing, then our um, product development functions, so our product and our engineering, uh, and then our customer operations, our customer success functions, so our professional services, 
uh, and essentially, you know, the customer success, how we look after and support our customers. So identifying the headline KPIs in each of those domains uh, and then making sure that they're broken down by cohort over time, by territory. So, you know, geogra geographically, you know, between, say, the UK or Europe and, and North America. Uh, and then by customer segments, so small customers, mid-sized customers, and then our largest customers. And so the types of KPIs that we're looking at, for example, were around, say, revenue growth. So do we understand our revenue growth and could we forecast that clearly month to month, both in terms of new business one, expansion revenue, you know, so cross-sell and upsell, uh, and then also churn. Again, our net revenue retention, were we clear on what it was and could we forecast that out clearly across those different dimensions? Um, pipeline, did we understand our pipeline coverage, our pipeline build, what that was going to look like into the future, particularly across the months uh, where we were going to be having these conversations that we could demonstrate, hey, we said we were working this deal, now we've closed it. And so again, there was that predictability that our investors would want to see into the future, they could see in the way that we were operating now. And that principle again extended out to others. We were looking at system utilization and products and engineering, which modules were used by our customers and to what extent, like why were they really buying from us? Why were they really using our product? And then monetization, like versus the volumes uh, of data and transactions that were going through our platform. What level of that were we actually realizing value on? How, how effectively were we monetizing? Was there more room to monetize? Uh, and, and again, that then reflects back into the depth of our integration into the ecosystem that we exist in um, and are we really operating effectively in the ecosystem so really important to build that picture to make sure you got the kpis um, and you understand them now but you can demonstrate that you can forecast them and track against them effectively into the future for us it was it was a case of making sure we had the data the correct data so really understanding um what did the, did, did the investors want to, to know about our organization from you know, our product and engineering functions, our go-to-market functions, and then our customer success functions, as well as, of course, the finances. Like, what do they really want to understand? Did we have that clearly drawn up in a framework? Uh, and then, you know, to what depth, but, but why did they want to understand that data? Because it's not always about the numbers, but it's really understanding what's important in that data to them. And so then as we took that data and that information and we discussed it and shared it with them, we tried to do it in a really honest kind of way. It wasn't trying to tell this kind of grand story that didn't feel, you know, it, it felt like you couldn't be believed. It was like, we want to tell a story that we can actually build like a real human connection over and just an honest conversation. These people are going to be your partners into the future. So you want them to invest now, but you want to have a credible and solid relationship moving forward. And so for us, um, getting the right data sets, but then making sure that we didn't overpromise, you know, particularly through the process in terms of the trading performance of the business, just being honest, this is where we think we're gonna be, demonstrating we can set plans, we can uh, set objectives and we, we can satisfy them, we can meet our targets. Um, so not overpromising. Uh, to, to those investors that we were speaking to. And then I think as well, um, acknowledging weakness where it existed. You know, no organization's perfect. Every organization needs to improve. And I think actually when you acknowledge weakness uh, and demonstrate that you can recognize weakness in your own organization, then that actually helps investors build uh, a lot of trust in your organization and it helps them feel more comfortable with whatever risk they're taking when they uh, choose to invest into you. Bringing an investor, it's great in terms of, you know, financially, of course, it, it helps resource you. But I think I think for us next, the real value of Marlin has been, um, firstly, uh, the operational expertise that they've brought to us. You know, just in terms of looking at the organization uh, as partners and saying, where are we doing really well and how do we do more of it? And actually, where are we weak? And where do we need to just have the honest conversation and make improvements, make changes? So that's felt great. We, we're, you know, as we look to the future, we're thinking about operationally, are we set up really well? Uh, and they've got a portfolio of organizations they're invested in, so they can help us understand best practice. Like, what does it look like in their top performing companies? Uh, and how should we learn from that and make sure that we're also top performing companies? So that's been really exciting. I think working on product strategy uh, and vision Again, they've got sector expertise. They understand how the market segments according to software categories uh, and where we should play, where we shouldn't. They also understand how it segments in terms of uh, customer profile. So we have our view of those things, but they have theirs. And we can bring those together, kind of trade notes and make sure that there's a really sound uh, core product strategy for the business as we then look to take that to market. 
Um, and then I think uh, the, the third area that feels really exciting for us in terms of working with them is looking at not only our organic growth strategy, so building uh, or sort of scaling our core product that, as we have now, uh, but also looking at our inorganic growth. Are there opportunities to partner with other organizations, uh, to potentially acquire other businesses? Um, you know, the whole M&A piece, how do we kind of go faster after our vision uh, and do that again in a really smart way that makes a lot of sense uh, for our customers, drives value to them, and in doing so, obviously, and naturally drive value back to the shareholders and the employees of our organization too.